Hello, I'm Ian Johnston. I'm back here to bring you Massey University's latest research on leptospirosis, and it's of special interest to dairy farmers and workers. Lepto's been a real burden for New Zealand dairy workers, and back in the 60s and the 70s, it was called dairy farm fever. About uh, seven or eight hundred people a year got very ill with the disease and really burdensome for those people and their families. Around that time and as a result of this, um, there was a lot of work done around developing ways to prevent the disease and the main one was the development of vaccination. And that was uptaken really quite readily by the dairy industry. So by the time you get to around the 1990s, the numbers are around 100, 150 a year. Now these are people who are still very sick with the disease but really we've up until now considered that dairy workers have been protected largely by those vaccinations. However, as Massey's epicentre director, Prof Cord Hewer, reports, there's been a change. In the recent about 10 years, uh, there's more reports about dairy farmers coming up as cases. Uh, we therefore uh, explored this in a small uh, pilot study with some students and uh, were surprised that um, it came out that 3% of the cows that were tested were actually shedding and that they were from about one third of the herds that were studied. But this was a very small study around Massey University. That study didn't show why the lepto bug was found in cow urine, a process called shedding. Was it a problem with the vaccination regime or was it a different type of lepto? There are at least five lepto strains in New Zealand and the dairy cattle lepto vaccine covers just two, Pomona and Hardjo. So a bigger investigation was undertaken in 2016 with the Massey team and doctoral student Yuni Yupiana. This is a cross-sectional study. Um, we collected 4,000 samples uh, from dairy cows of 200 farms all over New Zealand and we also collected uh, from all region in New Zealand and we involved around 92 vet practices um, and we look, want to look at the shedding prevalence and antibody prevalence of um, leptospora. Cord Hewer sums up the results. What that showed was that again, 2.7% of the cows were shedding and they were from 25% of the herds. Uh, and it showed that shedding was actually not associated to any of the vaccine strains, so that means that uh, vaccines were effective and that uh, vaccination by and large was quite successful. However, there were, uh, the, the shedding rates were actually related to one of the other two strains that were, was tested for. It was a very strong association with a strain called Tarasovi uh, and that is probably the one that is responsible for most of the shedding that we found in the study. Soon we'll be looking at the laboratory work Massey is doing to find out more about this Tarasovi strain found in cows. But in the meantime, there's one clear message that's already come out of the study. The predominant strains are still Harjo and Pomona. It means very clearly that farmers must continue to vaccinate against the strains uh, that are covered by the vaccine because they are still the dominant strains uh, in New Zealand as we see uh, in dry stock farmers. And since dairy farmers are particularly exposed, they really need to continue vaccinating. Worryingly, the study found that not all farmers are keeping the vaccinations up to date. Not everybody is sticking to their annual booster, meaning effectively their herds aren't covered. Vet Roger Marchant says they've long been pushing the message of proper vaccination programs. Vets over many years have been um, talking with farmers and developing programs on farm to sort of mitigate the risks, to deal with the risks that might be on farm. Now, um, the biggest risk is not vaccinating. So a key thing for um, farmers to be doing is to, to be using the currently available vaccines. It's important to keep up to date with current developments, 
and to realise vaccination isn't just a one-off activity. As Vet Tim Scotland explains. Over time there's been some, some changes and so the, the program's been slightly modified. Uh, traditionally the cars weren't started on their vaccination program until the, into getting into the autumn and r r relatively recent work is showing that there's a risk where the calves can contract the disease before those vaccines are, are protecting them and so the current recommendation now is that the calves should be vaccinated uh, really 10 weeks from the start of the mating period. Roger Marchant says when cases of lepto turn up it's often an indication that something has gone wrong. For example the the vaccine was used, but it was used um, at the wrong times. And that's not anybody's fault. It's simply that the messages may not have been uh, transmitted properly. Um, somebody may not have understood just what stock was to be done and, and what stock could be uh, left till the, for the annual booster. On Craig Rowe's Manawatu dairy farm, he and his workers are conscious that while Lepto has retreated, they do hear of new cases, and it's still a big issue. To us it's very important, uh, obviously for the health of the staff, ourselves, our children and the staff's children. Uh, well our main thing is our Lepto vaccination program. Um, so we're vaccinating our calves twice before Christmas and then um, we're vaccinating everything with a booster jab in, in May. Meanwhile at Massey University, scientists are concentrating on finding out more about the Tarasovi strain they found in cows and which is not included in the current vaccine. Because we found this tarasovai quite important, we plan to have the culture for this bacteria because we think that in the future probably um, we can consider to have them in the vaccine, in the future vaccine. However, tracking down, culturing and identifying the strain of tarasovai found in the dairy cows requires more than just donning a white coat and peering down a microscope because bacteria are slippery, changeable creatures. Leptospira, like many other bacteria, are not rigid in their genome structure, they're quite fluid and you can get genomic rearrangements and uh, swapping of DNA between other leptospira or even other bugs or you can get small mutations which over time lead to genetic drift so we need to do this to properly identify what the organism is. This quality makes for slow, painstaking lab research. Leptospira can be very difficult to culture, they're very slow growing, it can take three months to culture an organism and we've done some preliminary studies and been unsuccessful so far in isolating it so we need to go out and collect more cultures. Dr David Wilkinson says they're using advanced genetic techniques to understand the Tarasovi bacterium. With the Leptospira species we're working on do we have um, difficulty sometimes identifying exactly which uh, different types they are and so uh, to get around those difficulties we use molecular techniques that um, target the, the DNA of these organisms and um, we use the specific sequences that we obtain um, from, from the different leptospira to identify exactly what they are. The long-term aim is to develop a vaccine to protect dairy workers against the tarasovi bug that's so recently been found in cows. It, it'll take probably two to three years the first big challenge is to find isolates and grow them in culture to be able to produce vaccines. That is not easy. We've tried it. We failed about uh, 60 times. So uh, we need to develop new protocols for uh, culturing. And once we've uh, conquered that step, we need to go on to the next one and multiply and get in touch with vaccine companies who then in turn need to take it on and they have to develop protocols to get these vaccines registered and eventually built into commercial vaccines. In the meantime, dairy farmers must continue to be vigilant using current vaccines and taking other precautions to ensure they don't get lepto. While there's been some discussion about who should vaccinate the cows, farmers or vets, Tim Scotland says it's correct practice that's most important. It's more important that the vaccine program is effective and that it is, it's followed through with the recommendations after risk profiles being done for the farm when they should be starting the, with the vaccination of the calves and following through the timings and that the vaccine is, is looked after properly. It needs to be refrigerated and so if you're vaccinating multiple groups of stock over a period of the day you need to make sure that you keep that vaccine chilled while you're not using it. 
However, paying attention to wider areas of risk on the farm remains vital to protect yourself from lepto. A lot of that comes down to the movement of stock on and off uh, because there's risk of bringing the disease on with unvaccinated stock. Pigs are a major source of, in, of infection and so if there's pigs on the farm, but it's also, also the leptospec leptobacteria can survive in water for long periods of time and so if there's surface water or ponds, those sorts of things, drainways, they need to be made aware that they should be fenced off so the rodent control programs need to be effective and staff need to know that if uh, working in areas where there are rats and mice, anything to do with calf meal or the meal in, uh, for the cows, those sorts of things, that they, their hygiene's good and that they are washing hands after they've been doing that sort of work cleaning out those areas, covering any wounds I've got, cuts, things like that. On top of this, of course, vigilance with basic hygiene is also a key. Um, not smoking and eating in the dairy. Um, uh, some people wear gloves when they're uh, milking, some don't. Um, that's fine. Uh, the key thing is to ensure that uh, there's no contamination uh, by urine from the cows. That's the key factor. For dairy farmer Craig Rowe, ongoing reminders and orienting new workers help ensure that he, his family and staff remain safe from leptospirosis. Um, well, when we introduce new staff, we'll, we'll just run through the importance of the lepto and, and the lepto program uh, with them. And then normally just a refresher when we vaccinate each year just to make them realise why we're actually doing the vaccinating, that it's not something we just do for fun, it's, uh, there is a, a good reason behind it. If you have any questions after watching this, or if anything is not clear, we would love to hear from you.